James Randi once fooled an entire nation into believing his partner was possessed by a 30,000-year-old spirit. But why? James Randi's willingness to ask unpopular questions in order to get to the truth was a lifelong quest that began when he was around 11 years old. On his first day of Sunday school, young Randi, whose birth name was Randall Zwingy, was confused by the details of what the instructor was reading from the Bible. Randi raised his hand to ask how they knew it had really happened that way and the instructor insisted that if it was written in the Bible, it had to be true. The young Randy wasn't satisfied and replied, that sounds very unlikely. Afterward, Randy was pulled aside and asked about why he had been asking questions, to which Randy replied that he thought he was supposed to ask questions. He was sent home with a note for his parents, which stated that he wouldn't be welcome back at Sunday school. The following week, Randy took the money he was supposed to put on the Sunday school collection plate and bought an ice cream sundae instead. Randy's career exposing frauds and scammers began at age 15, when he visited a spiritualist church where the preacher claimed to be getting messages from the beyond. The congregation were asked to write down their problems and put them into sealed envelopes. The preacher would then hold an envelope and seem to magically know what was inside. Randy recognized immediately that the preacher was using the one-ahead gimmick. When he appeared to be opening an envelope to check if he had gotten his prediction right, he was actually opening and reading about the next person. The preacher had already read all the information he claimed to be receiving from the beyond. Randy was enraged to see the congregation being lied to and taken advantage of, so he seized one of the envelopes out of the trash and shouted the truth. The preacher's wife called the police. Randy was charged with disturbing a religious meeting. During those hours Randy spent in jail, he vowed that he would dedicate his life to exposing frauds and charlatans. As a child, James Randy saw a performance by a magician named Harry Blackstone. He was astonished by the things that Blackstone could do, and desperately wanted to understand how the illusions worked. He decided then and there that he would be a professional magician when he grew up. Before he was 20 years old, his dream would be realized, but only after a devastating injury. While still a teenager, he was struck by a car while riding his bicycle. The injuries were so severe that the doctors feared he might never walk again. Randy spent over a year in a full body cast, barely able to move. He used the time to read many books about magic. As soon as he was able to walk again, he joined a local carnival where he performed on stage as a magician. Randy dropped out of high school with only the final exams left before graduation. Despite this, he has credited his success in the field of science education to his high school science teacher. Randy told Skeptical Inquirer that while he never had a formal scientific education after he dropped out of high school, his physics teacher, Mr. Tovell, inspired his students to think about things critically. On one occasion, he presented the students with plans for a perpetual motion machine and challenged them to figure out why it didn't work. If they believed it would work, he told him they would build it together and see, an ethos that stuck with Randy. While Randy chose to use his skills to expose frauds and con artists, he always had the ability to fool people himself. If he did not have a strict moral compass, Randy could have easily been a highly successful scammer. Randy explained in the documentary An Honest Liar that, to entertain the audience during his early act, he would claim to have psychic abilities of various kinds. When Randy predicted the outcome of the World Series, it received a large amount of press coverage and suddenly, people believed that Randy had genuine magical powers. Randy has described how he would be stopped by total strangers on the street who recognized him from the news. Often, they were desperate for answers, and asked them to predict their futures or help them with serious problems. Sometimes, they even offered him money to answer their questions. Fellow magician and skeptic Pin Gillette said, It's very much to the good of the world that when Randy felt that power, he backed away from it. The Amazing Randy was a particularly skilled escape artist and often escaped from jail cells, but no escape had more impact on his career than one that happened right at the beginning, and it was completely unplanned. When Randy was 21 or 22, while working as a magician at a carnival near Quebec, a pair of police officers who had seen his act stopped him and asked him if he would be able to escape from their handcuffs. Randy agreed to let them cuff him and put him into the back of the squad car. When he exited the car on the other side, he already had the cuffs off. The two policemen were fascinated, and they were even more shocked when they took him to the local jail and Randy was able to escape from the cell. This impromptu performance got the attention of the local papers and sparked a new phase in Randy's career as an escape artist. Like the amazing Randy, acclaimed magician Harry Houdini had a mission in life, 
to expose frauds that used magicians' tricks to fool the public into believing they had supernatural powers. He served as a role model to Randy, not just as a skeptic and investigator of the paranormal, but in his career as a magician and escape artist as well. Throughout his career, Randy was able to beat several of Houdini's records, but out of respect, he took great care not to outdo Houdini too much. Randy explained that Houdini had set many of his records, including one where he was sealed in an underwater coffin when he was in his late 40s. When Randy repeated them, he was about two decades younger, so he didn't consider it a fair comparison. In order to show respect for Houdini, Randy intentionally broke the record only by a very small margin. The Amazing Randy was adept at escaping from jail cells quietly and efficiently, so much so that often the police only knew he had escaped when they heard him honking the horn of his car from the parking lot. His apprentice, respected psychologist and scientific investigator Massimo Polidoro, explained that the planning for these prison breaks sometimes went back years. If Randy were driving through a town at night and spotted a police station, he would often get out, ask an officer for directions, and then strike up a conversation about the jail. He would pose as an enthusiast, claiming that he collected different kinds of locks as a hobby, and bored policemen would often indulge him by showing him the types of locks on their cells. If they handed Randy a key, he would slip it into his pocket and press it into a plaster, making a perfect mold of it. Later, he would have his own copy made. Then he would wait, sometimes for several years. When he was certain his conversation with the police officer had been forgotten, he would have a friend anonymously challenge him to escape from that same jail he had visited. While pretending to debate if he would accept the challenge, Randy would visit the cell and stash the key he had made inside. When the time came, he could simply unlock the door and walk out. In 1973, shock rocker Alice Cooper was looking to create his most over-the-top tour for his album Billion Dollar Babies. With the album's success, for the first time Cooper could afford actual props for his act, and what he really wanted was illusions. Randy was in a magic shop when the call came in. A rock star was looking for a magician to travel with his tour. Randy raised his hand to put his name in, but only if Cooper was willing to pay $100 to meet with him. Cooper's team agreed. Not only did Randy help Cooper to design a stunt, he went on tour to help him execute it. Every night for three months, Cooper would appear to be decapitated by a guillotine live on stage. Randy, wearing a black hood, appeared on stage as the executioner to release the blade and chop off Cooper's head. While the amazing Randy was a highly accomplished escape artist, his stunts could be dangerous, and there was always a real risk that something could go wrong. When he was 55, one of his escape acts almost proved fatal. During the stunt, Randy was supposed to be sealed inside a can full of water. After the lid was put on, he began the process of escaping. But there was an unexpected malfunction, and he couldn't. To further compound the situation, he heard a crackling noise from his own spine. Several of his vertebrae had chipped, leaving him in terrible pain. Rather than panicking, Randy stayed calm and waited for his assistants to realize something had gone wrong. Finally, he was pulled out of the water and taken to the hospital. Afterwards, he decided to retire as an escape artist and dedicate himself to his scientific investigations instead. And I was at the point where I thought that maybe it was time to get out of this business. Randy's efforts to disprove Ori Geller's claims were among his most famous investigations. In the 1970s, Geller became shockingly famous by doing a series of typical magic tricks on talk shows, including, most famously, the ability to bend silverware and keys, supposedly with his mind. He even appeared in comic books. But Randy knew it was possible to perform these tricks without the use of magic, and regularly refuted Geller's claims by doing the exact same stunts on the same TV shows Geller had been a guest on. On one occasion, Randy was able to help The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson expose the fraud by helping them to set up Geller's segment in a way that prevented him from using his usual tricks. Randy eventually published a book debunking Geller's scam. Geller responded with numerous lawsuits. When Randy was awarded a $272,000 MacArthur Foundation grant for his work as a science educator, he had to spend almost all of it defending himself against libel suits from Geller. Randy was frustrated by parapsychologists who claimed to study psychics using scientific methods, as he believed it was impossible to fairly study these claims because the subjects were intentionally deceiving the researchers. In order to demonstrate that the researchers could be easily deceived, Randy deceived them himself, with the help of a couple of teenage fans. They were Michael Edwards and Steve Shaw, who later became known as the magician Banachek. Both had become adept at bending spoons using the same tricks as Geller. A large study was being funded to investigate the possibility of psychic abilities, and while there were many applicants, the researchers ended up choosing Edwards and Shaw. 
Even with Randy assisting the researchers by coming up with ways to thwart trickery, both Edwards and Shaw were able to deceive the researchers into believing they had supernatural abilities at every turn. The truth only came out when Randy, Edwards, and Shaw held a press conference revealing the hoax. I don't believe they're tricking us, especially based on the research that we've done in the last year. Randy was famous for his dedication to exposing those who used magic tricks to deceive people into believing they genuinely had supernatural abilities. As a magician, I think that I'm uniquely qualified to expose trickery when it occurs in parapsychology or in psychic claims. Over the years, Randy exposed many, many so-called mediums and psychics and the methods they used to scam innocent people out of their money. But only once did he use packing peanuts to expose the truth. James Heydrich was a charlatan who claimed that he could move objects with his mind. He had already acquired a following in Utah, but he became famous when he appeared to demonstrate his supernatural abilities on television in 1980 by turning the pages of a phone book and moving a pencil without touching them. Soon after, Randy challenged him to do it again, but this time there were packing peanuts scattered around the book. Heydrich couldn't do it. Then, Randy demonstrated the trick himself and revealed the truth. Heydrich had been using his breath to move the objects, turning the pages and moving the pencil by blowing on it. In 1981, Heydrich confessed that Randy was right. Peter Popoff was a famous faith healer and self-proclaimed prophet, claiming to be able to cure any ailment or disability from deafness to cancer with the power of God. He advised his audience of thousands to throw their mobility aids and pills into the aisles of his church because he claimed they wouldn't need them anymore. He also encouraged them to pay him for the privilege. As Randy stated in An Honest Liar, a man like Reverend Peter Popoff is a very dangerous man. In many cases, he was harming people physically because he was convincing them that they didn't have to go to doctors anymore. Popoff was able to convince his congregation of his abilities by seeming to know impossible things about them, like their full names and addresses. Randy and several of his friends conducted an investigation into Popoff by attending his shows in disguise. They discovered that all attendees were asked to fill out prayer request forms, divulging personal information before the show. And then Popoff's wife would simply read him the information through an earpiece disguised as a hearing aid. You want to get rid of this walker, sister? From their first meeting, Randy and his husband, Jose Alvarez, were always discussing new ideas. They first met purely by coincidence at the library, where a mutual interest in astronomy brought them together. In the documentary An Honest Liar, Randy revealed he was visiting the Fort Lauderdale Public Library when he spotted Alvarez looking at photographs of outer space and offered to tell him more about what he was looking at. Alvarez, who is an artist and was looking at the images for reference for his work, was intrigued. The two hit it off and ended up discussing space all day. Randy offered to show Alvarez the telescope he had at home, and the two arranged to meet again so Alvarez could look through it and see the moons of Jupiter. It was the beginning of a relationship that would last the rest of Randy's life. In 1987, 60 Minutes Australia reached out to James Randy to ask for help putting together a special, one that debunked the claim that mediums could have thousand-year-old spirits living inside their bodies. Randy replied that the only way to prove that spirit channeling could be faked was to fake it. Soon, a mysterious spirit called Carlos was taking the Australian media by storm, apparently communicating with the outside world through the body of Jose Alvarez. A fake channeler, we settled on a local artist and friend of Randy's, Jose Alvarez. That's his real name. All of the credentials that Alvarez presented were intentionally and obviously fake, and it would fall apart if any journalist looked into them, but none did. The media and general public accepted Carlos as a genuine supernatural phenomenon, and many were even willing to give him their money. Through Carlos, Randy was able to prove that not only could the news be fooled by a fake medium, but it was also easy. Randy later stated that working with Alvarez on the hoax made the couple realize that they belonged together. In 2011, Randy's long-term partner and husband, artist Jose Alvarez, was arrested, jailed for six weeks, and put on trial for adopting a false identity during his escape from his home country of Venezuela, where he had been persecuted for his sexuality. When he was 16 years old, Alvarez, whose given name was Davy Peña Artiega, was attacked and threatened with a gun because people suspected he might be gay. He traveled to the United States and bought a fake identity of someone he was told was a dead American named Jose Alvarez, but he had been lied to. The original Jose Alvarez was still very much alive. Alvarez pleaded guilty to the charges and served six months house arrest, but was allowed to stay in the United States with his beloved partner, Randy. No matter what his name is, I know who he is, and I know what he is as well. He's my partner. He's very, 
very important to me. While the amazing Randy's fans knew a lot about his professional career, both as a magician and as a skeptic, his family life was exceedingly private for most of his years. His fans did not know that Randy was gay until he decided to officially come out at the age of 81, when he had already been with his long-term partner Jose Alvarez for decades. Even less commonly known is that Randy was a foster parent. In addition to supporting his own foster children, Randy also regularly donated to support foster children in the United States. During an interview with People Magazine, magazine in 1986, an interviewer noticed photographs of children and teens from different ethnic backgrounds around Randy's home. Randy confirmed that they were his seven foster children. His oldest was Alexis, who Randy first spotted playing guitar on a street corner. Alexis lived with Randy throughout his teen years and grew up to be a successful composer. In 1988, Randy traveled to China with a group of fellow skeptics. There, the team investigated a series of supernatural claims that had gotten significant attention in the international media. Among the phenomena they investigated was someone who claimed to be able to manipulate a woman lying on a table without touching her so that she moved when he moved. However, when Randy and his fellow skeptics put up a barrier so that the woman couldn't see him, her movement stopped matching what he did. She was just mimicking him. They also investigated an experiment being conducted on so-called psychic children, who supposedly could tell how many matches were in a box without looking. However, when Randy and his friends taped the boxes shut, their powers vanished. While Randy would sometimes enjoy a cup of coffee, he did not drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes, or misuse drugs, because he did not want to alter his perception of the world around him. In an interview for PBS, Randy explained that his goal was always to be as close to understanding the truth about the world as possible. To Randy, altering his mind intentionally was completely out of the question, saying, that can easily fuzz the edges of my rationality, fuzz the edges of my reasoning powers. Randy stated that in order to be as aware as possible, he needed to resist the temptation to indulge in mind-altering substances, saying, that means giving up a lot of fantasies that might be comforting in some ways, but I'm willing to give that up in order to live in an actually real world, as close as I can get to it. In his later years, the exceedingly thin, five and a half foot tall Randy was known for walking with the aid of a sleek black cane topped with a silver skull for a handle. Fellow science educator and skeptic Dr. Harriet Hall remarked to Skeptical Inquirer that this increased his ever-growing resemblance to a wizard. The cane was given to him as a gift by the Italian Committee for the Investigation of Claims on the Paranormal, which was co-founded by Randy's former apprentice, Massimo Polidoro. The Amazing Randy was always a showman, with a flair for the dramatic, so a gothic cane would never have seemed out of place on stage or off, but his cane was functional as well as fashionable. By the 2000s, Randy had survived a heart attack, cancer, and surgery for aneurysms in his legs. At the beginning of his TED talk on the lack of scientific backing for homeopathy and how pseudoscience is used to exploit people for money, Randy took an entire bottle of 32 homeopathic sleeping pills. Though he regularly did this at the beginning of his talk around the world for 10 years, he never once seemed remotely tired while giving his lecture. According to the FDA, when creating a homeopathic medicine, a real chemical that has real physical effects on the human body is repeatedly diluted until there is none of it left. As Randy energetically explained in his talk, proponents of homeopathy counterintuitively believe that the more diluted that original chemical is, the more powerful the healing properties. Randy debunked this, saying, It's exactly equivalent to taking one 325 milligram aspirin tablet, throwing it into the middle of Lake Tahoe, and waiting two years. Then, when you get a headache, you take a sip of this water. Famously, Randy offered a $1 million prize to anyone who could prove under scientific scrutiny that they had any supernatural abilities. The prize remained available for years, and more than a thousand people tried to win it. But genuine magic powers were never proven, and the money was never claimed. But Randy did frequently give out his other prize, the Pegasus Awards. These dubious honors were awarded to the worst promoters of nonsense, or those whom the James Randy Educational Foundation thought were doing the most harm by promoting pseudoscience. Winners have included Dr. Oz, for being a physician who has promoted faith healing, and Andrew Wakefield, for refusing to take back his claim that vaccines cause autism, even after his study was discredited over and over again by other researchers. Have you ever found anybody that had real psychic paranormal power? Never. 
Randy had a favorite way of exposing frauds claiming to have supernatural abilities, which was to repeat their stunt exactly using standard magician's tricks and then explain how it was done. Generally, this was an effective tactic for showing audiences that it was possible to achieve these results without the use of genuine magic, but occasionally it backfired. On more than one occasion, superstitious and credulous people decided that Randy himself must actually possess supernatural powers. In one instance, Randy was duplicating the tricks performed by self-professed psychic Ori Geller to show that they could be done through trickery, when a professor from the University of Buffalo shouted that Randy was a fraud. Randy confirmed that he was tricking the audience, which was the performance's point. Then, to everyone's surprise, the professor clarified that he believed that Randy was actually using his own psychic abilities and lying to everyone by pretending he was doing a magic trick. But please don't be deceived. I don't have psychic powers. I'm merely an illusionist. Similarly, on another occasion, U.S. Senator and hardcore believer in the paranormal Claiborne Pell insisted that while Randy believed he was doing magic tricks, he might actually have psychic abilities he was unaware of that made his act possible. It just goes to show that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him think. Shortly after his death, in October of 2020, fellow magicians Penn and Teller stated of James Randy, Randy proved you could be skeptical without ever being cynical. Randy never hypothesized the worst in people. He never gave up on humanity. He didn't believe in evil. He trusted and he loved. He was always kind. Randy was the world's most famous skeptic, but he was never skeptical of love. While Randy is remembered as an uncompromising skeptic with no tolerance for superstition, there was more to his career as a skeptic than just a disdain for supernatural claims. His desire to expose frauds came not only from a fury at watching charlatans get away with fraud, but also from a deep desire to protect people from being exploited. His husband, Jose Alvarez, perhaps put it best when he said, people don't know how much he cares when he sees someone in distress. He will do what is necessary to save somebody. 